हाईलाइट चैनल ऑफ द रणवीर शो दिस इज टी आर एस क्लिप्स वी गॉट द लास्ट ग्लेशियल मैक्सिमम अप्रोक्सीमेटली ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड टू एटीन थाउजेंड ईयर्स टू एक्सप्लेन वॉट ग्लेशियल मैक्सिम ओके 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 सो अर्थ इज गॉन थ्रू आइस एजेस वी नो दैट दे बीन पीरियड्स ऑफ आइस एजेस पीरियड्स ऑफ ड्राउट एंड यू माइट वॉन्डर वाई इज इट हैपनिंग वेल मिलान कोविच वॉज अ सर्बियन साइंटिस्ट नाइनटीन ट्वेंटीज हु लिंक दिस अप विद मूवमेंट्स ऑफ अर्थ इन अदर वर्ड्स वी नो अर्थ इज रोटेटिंग Mm. no biggie we know that mm. earth is going around the sun no biggie we know that also in addition to that earth is doing three more things one is its orbit around the sun is going from elliptical to slightly circular circular to elliptical circular oh. to elliptical and this is happening in a cycle period periodicity of about 100000 years what that effectively means for non mathematics grads is that earth is going close and far from the sun you can think of it's it like yes wobbling. yes yes but but not uh, significantly but they say just that yes yes but the thing is even that because is enough. that is enough just the, a little bit yes, it will yes. alter temperatures heavily exactly 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 the second one it is doing is that axial precession we talked about where the axis of rotation takes 26000 years to complete that is the second one the third one is earth's tilt it goes from 21 degrees to 24 uh, degrees and this happens at 41000 years So we got three additional cycles now. What is Earth's tilt? The 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 tilt. We are tilted now at twenty three degrees, right? Our axis appears to be tilted as we are going around the sun. It looks like see this tilt in my arm. Oh, okay. Taking the North Pole and the South Pole yes. as a reference. So yes, ah, yes. It the, appears that we are ah, tilted. Okay, okay. Just like Uranus appears to be on its floor, uh, uh, things like that. So it appears to be going and is tilted and so on. So we, you 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 have uh, Earth's tilt going from twenty one degrees to twenty four degrees, and this happens at forty one thousand years. So three cycles i talked about 100000 years circular to elliptical second one is the pre- axial precession 41 uh, 26000 years third one the tilt this is around uh, 41000 years milankovitch did not discover these these things were seen by others his contribution is the addition of these three cycles results in the amount of radiant energy the su- earth gets from the sun okay as in you put these figures into some mathematical formula you'll figure out how much of radiant energy is coming radiant energy means intense intensity of light <coughs> yes the sunlight how much of sunlight we're getting the each the northern horizon the northern hemisphere southern hemisphere how much we're getting and sunlight might be measured through the total quantity of photons the flux the amount of flux we're getting solar flux we're getting okay. there are other ways to do it but bottom line he said the ice ages and the drought periods of earth are related to these three cycles one of the most successful scientific theories to the present day because you grow and drill in the ice core in, in greenland or antarctica it fits this uh, prediction so beautifully so we know that's true so we know through this these cycles that uh, 22000 to 18000 years ago earth went through an ice age and this ice age is called the last glacial maximum and this resulted in so much of water locked up in ice that the shore lines are visible far beyond where they are today i'm going to ask you a very yeah. rookie question mm, mm. um have you seen the animated movie ice age mm-hmm. you've seen it right love the squirrel yeah so you know exactly <laughs> what i'm talking uh that's the reference point for two generations when yeah. it comes to the ice oh i would go as far as saying four five generations okay. know about the ice age from those animated films right draw out a picture of the ice age for people mm. who've not seen the animated movie mm. uh in terms of what was the earth like then yes i would also go as far as saying what was the equatorial region around the earth like then? right 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 so so there's there is a diversity of opinions among geologists there is an unpopular opinion that earth was an ice ball the whole earth was a slushy ice ball that that's a very unpopular opinion but there are some people who predict that but then some people estimate using the climate models that the 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 ice the glacier the glaciers had come to a fairly large extent in india himalayas maybe even beyond the himalayas maybe up to new delhi and others maybe we had ice ages over here what is a glacier 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 is the uh, ice pack that we have that seems to grow over time if 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 you have more of cooler periods it eventually keeps growing over time for example gangotri we have a glacier okay. over there uh, correct my science here hmm. okay my assumption is that when you 
totally lower the temperature of the earth which is what is happening in an ice age mm. gradually mm. what ends up happening is a lot of the water vapor starts collecting and forming right. ice right that is how glacier right eventually increases. begins yes yes so effectively earth was also a lot taller right yeah i guess i could say that ice pack was growing as in there was a layer of ice yes. that grew around right. the earth right 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 okay. right, right. Uh, my assumption has always been that mm. in a place as hot as say tamil nadu hmm. okay i've been to tamil nadu and you hmm. need to experience the heat in tamil nadu yeah, in right. the summer to right. really understand how hot india can get uh <laughs> yes even that part had like i said unpopular opinion some people say even in the equatorial region we had ice that's a minority there's a book there called snowball earth where the geologist is discussing why he thinks that was the case but then this we are talking about the last glacial maximum that is not as severe as earlier ice ages earlier ice ages were even more severe so this was not that severe this this particular ice age we're talking about and what is the frequency of them like, like i said the three cycles right the 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 eccentricity cycle precession cycle tilt cycle by adding the impact of those three things people can predict when they will come But so are, there is are they at equal no no it's no. random it's a little a, bit because of the cycle it's a, it's when the periodicity is resonate right the resonance has got to build up because sometimes it could be out of phase if you're out of phase then the impact is not much but when all three add up with resonance re- resonances between them that's when you'll have an impact either cold impact or a heat impact one okay. of the two things so over millions of years right. you're able to predict right. and this phase will be an right. ice age in this right. phase right right precisely and there are also warming periods and cooling precisely. periods precisely all are uh, can be predicted with these kind of cycles and we're currently in a warming period that's what we have found yes we are in a family hockey stick kind of rise yes we are in a warming period right now and we're making it way worse because of using fossil fuels human activities this is an there are other people who are politically torn by this whole thing some people saying it is a natural consequence of earth cycles whereas others are saying it has accelerated since the industrial revolution because of human activity so we are in the holocene extinction event right yeah. now this is almost a controversial conversation you know like i know how controversial the conversation <laughs> can get uh, i'm all for the environment i right. strongly believe that our actions are causing a lot of harm to environment right. it's visible to the human eye right if you go out in my balcony hmm. now hmm. versus even 2 years ago hmm. there's hmm. so much more haze there's hmm. so much more smog hmm. of hmm. course we are damaging the environment right like mm-hmm. as joe root said who mm-hmm. is the former in england cricket team mm-hmm. captain mm-hmm. he said that when i was playing in mumbai it felt like i was eating the air oh, so there's no way that our actions are not adding to global warming very according true. to me very true there's a paper that came out from scientists 15000 scientists in 2017 or 18 they gave a two page paper with only graphs in each graph the depletion of the forest cover and the dead zones in the sea where there's no life in the sea and the uh, forest cover ozone pack like this they had about 15 to 20 indicators every one of them is down every one of them showing indicators going down and they had promoted that it's urgent we should go to a plant based diet the sooner we do that the better for the environment and obviously reducing fertility also Now, that was a recommendation also when you pinch and poke and punch mother nature this much mm. Mm. it's going to pinch and poke and punch you back at some point the gear model earth is alive and she will respond in a way to do that and you yeah. feel it you see in the vedanta concept everything has got consciousness everything is part of brahman if everything is part of brahman there is some amount of consciousness here here and maybe a growing amount of consciousness as you go to humans and so on self awareness and uh, consciousness so this is part of who we think we are there is consciousness everywhere including the earth and yes there will be a reaction eventually but we are digressing from the last glacial maximum let's talk about the ice age good sir <laughs> last I, glacial maximum i i just think you know these warming periods cooling periods narratives are important to understand the ice age better precisely yes 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 indeed indeed so 18 24000 22000 to 18000 years ago we had this maximum of this last glacial max meaning most of the water was locked up in ice and it is estimated that the sea levels were 125 meters lower than where they are today that's approximately 400 feet can you imagine 125 meters lower that's where the water level was that means continents were larger right right and now is a fascinating thing there's a professor called ramaswami sm ramaswami in bharati das university in trichinopoly he published a paper two or three years back 
saying that he had used remotely operated vehicles and sonar in the Bay of Bengal. Not just anywhere, but he was wanting to find out what is below on the Bay of Bengal, 15 kilometers outside the present shoreline, 125 meters below. He has found man-made structures there. Mm. Uh, did they date it? Yes. Well, 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 he's taken many radio samples, but I'm telling you from last glacial maximum, when could it have been possible that humans were living 125 meters below the sea, right? This is only possible during the last glacial maximum when all over the world, sea level was lower by 125 meters. And he's reporting, he's taking pictures, you can see his paper, where there is, looks to be a man-made harbor. That is fascinating. Why would people need harbor 18,000 years ago? Who were they trading with? What were they trading with? What kind of ships were they? No iron. What were they? How were they building these things? Explain this point further. Mm. The reverse of this mm. is Dwarka getting engulfed by the I will sea. come to that. I will come to that. Okay. I will come to that. So, uh, uh, Professor Ramaswamy, he's uh, saying he's got a lot of artifacts, taken carbon dating. I think the results are not published yet. But he thinks that these are going back around 18,000 years. He's saying the shape of the harbor seems to be a technology that has moved northwards. He's saying Dwaraka's shape of the harbor and everything seems to be similar to what he's found here. I, I didn't understand So, this. So he's saying the harbor shape and other such things seem to be similar here and in Dwaraka. But oh. Dwaraka now is uh, uh, later, dated by more than uh, 10,000 years later, right? I also so, just want to mention uh, about Dwaraka to mm. our listeners. We had someone from... Uh, the special forces of the Navy, mm -hmm. of the Indian Navy, mm -hmm. it's called mm -hmm. the Marcos, right. whose job was to dive deep wow. and mm -hmm. investigate Dwarka. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this has been found by the Marcos of the Indian Wonderful. military. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, now go on, sir. My, my understanding of, um, well, let, let me finish uh, Bharati Dasan's uh, university work. So they have found man-made harbors over there, clearly showing to us that human activity was there in the coastal regions in India in a very ancient period of time. And we have evidence of uh, coastal civilizations. Not only, in, this is the Pum Puhar, not today's Pum Puhar, but 18,000 years ago, that could have been Pum Puhar. And on Dwaraka, again, we, we know from Mahabharata that uh, after Arjuna got the uh, Yadava women out, turns around and Dwaraka sunk under the sea. We know that in 2003, there was National Institute of Oceanography from Chennai. They sent a ship with sonar equipment and things like that to Gulf of Cambay because they wanted to lay an internet a submarine line. So they're mapping the ocean floor. In the process of mapping, in that paper, they have reported that they found a, a nine kilometer wall, a long a structure that seems to be like a seawall. It, they said it is, looks man-made. A lot of controversy on that, saying it's natural or not, but it looks like a seawall running for nine kilometers. They dredged up a piece of wood, carbon dated in Germany, Hanover, as well as in Hyderabad. And they came with a date of around 9,000 years before present for that piece of wood. Promptly, there are people saying big deal, so what, and those kind of things. But uh, uh, there are associations with perhaps Dwaraka. And I don't fully buy it because my belief is Dwaraka is around 150 kilometers out uh, from, from where they were looking. If, if you look at Beit Dwaraka, where it is and where uh, 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 today's Dwaraka is, my belief is it's it's off over there. There's some reasons why I think so, and I, I've forgotten entirely how to argue that, but I wrote it down at some point. So it's out in the sea. Anyway, we are finding artifacts. We are finding artifacts in coastal civilizations. Here's a fascinating part, uh, Ranveer. We have stories that talk about uh, uh, in, in, in Tamil Nadu, in, in, in Tamil people, have got memories of a Sangam period. A Sangam period that lasted about 10,000 years ago. They think there were three yeah. sang Sangam periods are literary periods. They believe there are three Sangam periods. The earliest one was almost 10,000 years ago. It happened in a place they called Thain Madurai. Thain Madurai means Southern Madurai. Okay, some, some place over there. Second period was another 3,000 years, a literary period. Then they believe that the entire thing was submerged. And this is written in... It is the cultural memory of the Tamil people. So many people have memory of this going into the past and talking about this. And this entire Thain Madurai was submerged. And the third literary period took place in the present Madurai. 
which is northern Madurai, literally. So Tamil people pres- preserve a memory of lands that have been lost. Oof. The Tamil nationalists promptly said Kumari Kandam, that is stretching from Madagascar to Australia to uh, India. I don't think that is true. Because, You'll uh, have to give context here. Okay, okay. So in uh, uh, um, late 1900s, uh, no, 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 early 1900s, when people did not know what plate tectonics, plate tectonics are the ones that matter for continental shaping and those kinds of things, the Western scientists were interested in knowing why do we have the same fossils in different continents. The limors are popular in uh, Madagascar, but what are the limors doing in India? How is that possible? So they presumed that it was a land bridge through which these things had come about. And the Tamil nationalists promptly said that there must have been uh, uh, land connected from Madagascar to uh, southern India, to Australia. And that's remembered in the Sangam period, land submerged. I don't think that is true because I have looked through Google Earth. If you can go to Google Earth and look at the depth of the water, just outside continental shelf of, shelf of India, the depth falls to three kilometers, two kilometers, five kilometers. There's no way we had land even l- during the last glacial maximum. Last glacial maximum is our reference because water level was 125 meters below, right? So any land that was 125 meters and above is candidates for the submerged land. That Tamil memory is there. And that does not extend to continent-wide. But it extends about 90 kilometers from the present shoreline. 90 kilometers from the present shoreline, we had land. And so Tamil memory is preserving that. There were coastal civilizations here that is all sunken during the uh, earth warming up, ice ages going up, and, and uh, rather water levels going up. Just like so, how where we are sitting, Mumbai, it's right. probably going to be underwater in 200 years. So easily possible, very possible. And I, I think that's a prediction, in fact. You don't have to wait that long. If the predictions are right, it could happen in 2050. In 2050, we could have water levels. Chennai could be submerged. Mm-hmm. Kolkata and uh, Bangladesh, many places could be submerged. Uh, this side, Mumbai also could suffer a lot of submergence events. And Florida in the US, that could suffer submergence events. So people are predicting that. I mean, given that they said the doomsday scenario is if the average temperature of the earth goes up by 1.5 degrees compared to industrial revolution. Guess what? In 2023, we broke the record many times. All over the world, we broke this record of 1.5 average uh, centimeter uh, centigrade. We broke it many times. If this is a recurring event into the future, I think we're in for some pretty bad weather. Apocalyptic <laughs> floods. Precisely, precisely. It could, could very much happen. I mean, you know, if we truly open eyes, mm. apocalyptic natural events are already happening around us. Right. But we're just oblivious. Right. Or we're just escaping it. We, we don't make the connections. We yeah. live in the moment, but we don't have memory to connect the events and have a dynamical picture. I don't remember so many floods, so many storms, so many earthquakes happening this frequently when I was a child. Right. Maybe earthquakes are separate from that argument, but at least when we're talking about flash floods, right. whatever's right. happening right. in the Himalayas, mm-hmm. this is nature biting back. We just need to open our eyes and notice. Right, right, right. Um, anyway, so you asked me what is my notion of history. All this was my deep history. Early yeah. on, you asked me what is a deep history. And this, I said it goes back so much of time. Now I'm talking 18,000 years ago, we had people living here and we got cultural memory in the south of lands that have been lost. The lost lands would have been around uh, the, 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 the late glaciers. One more ice age, mini ice age called late glacial maximum. The last glacial is 20, 22 to 18,000 years ago. The late glacial is around 12,000 years. Younger Dryas. Younger Dryas period. Yes, that's the Younger Dryas. Because I believe, uh, I don't know the exact science behind this, but um, basically when that meteor hit Earth around 12,000 years ago, uh, it created a massive dust cloud in the air. Right, right. It's as if you're shooting a bullet into right. a big ball of mm-hmm. sand. Mm-hmm. The dust mm-hmm. cloud stayed, mm-hmm. blocked off sunlight, the lack of sunlight cooled down the earth heavily right, right. for a long time. Right. Uh, and this is what Randall Carlson's research is also based on. Mm. He mm. spoke about studying the effect of the glaciers from this period on the geography of North America, which is very close to where the impact happened, happened right, which right. apparently happened in the Gulf of Mexico. 
Mm-hmm. So he, he's done multiple podcasts of Joe Rogan talking about how they've mm-hmm. tracked the movement of the glaciers in North America. Itself. Very interesting. Very interesting. When did we last see something like this? In the Indian context, in the Indian context, now brace yourself, 74,000 years ago. As in? 74,000. Like, what, what did we see? We had a Mount Toba, an event, a super volcano in Sumatra, referred to as Mount Toba. Indonesia. Indonesia. This, this was so big and was aimed towards India, it put so much of particulate matter in the earth that India and Pakistan were covered by five meters of ash. Can you imagine this? Five meters of ash. Even today, if you go to Jwalapuram, Jwalapuram is in Karnul district in Andhra Pradesh, there's a researcher called Ravi Kori Sitter. He's published some works on this. He has discovered the ash layer from the 75,000 years ago He's found human artifacts below the ash layer, then the ash layer, human artifacts above the ash layer, showing India was populated before this event and after. But five in, meters of ash. Five meters of ash. Like and my engineering hostel room. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go on. But the point is that it put so much of particulate matter, it caused an instant six year nuclear winter. It caused a mini what thousand. Is, what is a nuclear winter? Nuclear winter. Yes, so this is the concept that we have in uh, in our apocalyptic view. If you have uh, nuclear explosions and things of that nature, there'll be so much of uh, matter in the in the air, the dust and other such things floating around the earth and so on, prevents the sunlight, sunlight. from coming in, cooling down. It's a winter happening over there. But this caused a thousand year uh, winter over here. And they estimate that the breeding adults fell to 10,000. What? the number of adults who are alive after that event. All over the earth. All over the earth, in, in India. Because all the, see, in this empty DNA studies, they presume that all the non-African people of the world have originated in India through two lineages called M and N markers. And so what I'm telling you now is related to that. After this Mount Toba event happened in 74,000 years ago, they estimate less than 10,000 adults were there on earth. On, on, on this region, from whom we have all come. If this theory is right, you and I are alive because one of our ancestors are there yeah. who survived it's, that event. It's not just you and me, but it's also <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo, everybody, Wayne Rooney. Everybody. Uh, LeBron, not LeBron James, because Why technically not? he's of African okay, okay, descent. Right, 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 according right, to this right, theory. According to this theory, yes. All the non-African populations have come from these these people. Okay. So amazing theory, but but we are seeing this. What you said is about this Crandall's theory. About uh, we are seeing this again and again. Krakatoa, Krakatoa was a massive volcano that happened in Sumatra, uh, eighteen hundred. So I'm not mistaken, eighteen eighty or something like that. That also put so much of particulate matter in the skies, and uh, we have had problems. Six hundred current era. One more massive volcano happened, and I'm trying to link that up with. Uh, uh, what happened in India. We had droughts over here. And can we see that regimes have changed? The Chalukyas came at that time. There were other powers that faded away. Powers were there for a thousand years, suddenly fading away and a new power coming over there without a war or any such thing. The only thing is that there must have been so much of unrest and problems with no crops growing because of nuclear kind of winter kind of. So these are playlists made especially for you. We've tailor-made learning experiences for you. The RS Clips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.